G'day folks, uh, I couldn't help creating a video about this one because it's been driving me nuts and uh, maybe it drives other people nuts too. Uh, with my Mercedes Vito, which is uh, uh, mostly a, a great car, nevertheless uh, there's an issue with the sliding doors whereby when people open the doors, I mean I'm getting passages in and out all the time, you know. Um, and when the door slides uh, fully open, which is what happens most of the time, it locks into the, the hold mechanism, or there's probably a word for that, and, uh, but it's too strong. And, uh, and then people try to shut the door and it requires a lot of force. Uh, the handle on the passage side is now loose. Because of it, people are slamming doors and it's just not sustainable. It really is <clears throat> ridiculous, uh, the situation, and I have to fix it. <clears throat> There's no way around it. It's, it's just driving me nuts. Um, pretty much every passenger looks at me with this bemused look of like, why won't the door shut? You know, the, so many people ask me, oh, oh is this an electric door? Or uh, is there some latch or something like that? Because they go to shut the door, they can't shut it. Um, I've even had... Uh, some people they, they just can't shut the door. They can't overcome the power of the latch, and I'll literally have to get out and, and shut the door for them. And that's I've got into the habit of actually getting out of the car and showing the door for people, uh, which when you're having, you know, um, <clears throat> a regular influx and outflux of passengers, uh, it's just not sustainable. So <clears throat> I've just started to look into it, and uh, here's what I've found so far. I'll just switch the view. Oh, no, you won't let me do that. What a clever camera, not. Okay, so, uh, there's the door handle. Uh, well, I can't really just demonstrate much at all in this stupid mode, it won't let me switch. Uh, anyway, so, <clears throat> now there, there's a rail that normally sits in here, which is where the the thing is, the thing is here, and I'll show you in a minute because I've taken, managed to get the rail out. There's actually a nut at this end. You can't, you can't see where it would be, but if you get underneath the car, there's a little nut there. It's actually really easy to work with. The rest of it is just screws in the front here. And uh, I managed to prise, just pop this up. It's not easy. Of course, they make cars to uh, be assembled but not disassembled these days. So I've just lifted that up, and I managed to, this corner was awkward, um, but I did manage to get it past it. I did damage the rubber slightly, which is unfortunate, but it's, it's not going to be an issue. Um, so once you get that out, let's go and have a look. <clears throat> so this is the rail, and... Uh, so when I was looking at the car, that was the right-hand side, so uh, that's that little uh, little bolt thing there. That little bolt thing there, which I took the nut off. Other than that, it was just screws into the face here. Okay, so now we've come to the culprit. <clears throat> now, uh, I'm kind of guessing that you know, maybe some uh, not so clever guy parked on a hill, maybe the door under the old system didn't stay shut. <clears throat> you know, back when doors were made properly um, to with the right amount of force, that's what I'm talking about. Back when you had the correct amount of force in these kinds of things, um, maybe somebody parked on a steep hill and it let go and some poor little kid got a broken finger or something. I, I really have no idea. But somewhere along the way, someone has made this more powerful than it should be. <clears throat> and, I mean, you can see uh, see this spring here. It's pretty juicy. You see, if you <clears throat> try and move this, uh, it's... <clears throat> you can, if you get it from the right angle, you can push it with your thumb. But right now, I can't. <clears throat> so, I'm looking at my options. And uh, I mean, I could put a cable tie there, and that would just basically space it out a bit, which would reduce the maximum 
uh, amount that it can kind of force its way in between the two wheels on the runner. I could over, uh, I could permanently deform the spring by over, over, over stretching it <clears throat> so that it then reduces the preload. Um, I mean, if you if you kind of wanted to do a real cheapskate method, I don't know if it would work at all or how much, but if you actually undid this screw, um, that would actually also reduce the force on the spring. I don't know how much. I don't know if it would create any kind of rattling or uh, other kinds of issues, whether it starts to flog out a hole or... I mean, I, I, I don't think that's a great idea. Um, actually, I've just thought of that now. I could actually unscrew that and put a packer in between here, which will reduce the force of, of that. I mean, that's, that's quite a nifty little thing. As, as long as it doesn't have clearance issues, um, that is an idea. It's totally reversible. Um, should be pretty reliable and um, should achieve what I want. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it won't reduce the force of the spring, but it will mean that people won't have to deflect it as much. And I think that may be enough. So anyway, uh, I'm going to stop this for now and um, see how we go.